In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern where we still see tons of snowfall showing up on the models. It's just kind of shifted in location. So we're going to talk a little bit about where we now expect the most snowfall to occur. Uh, we do have different areas at different times seeing their own threats of snowfall. So pretty much everybody has a chance at this point, but we have seen the, the heart of where the models want to consistently put these systems shift a little bit here and models appear even colder kind of just descending colder and colder and colder as time goes on here but it's getting even more dramatic now to where we're talking historically in terms of cold now you might hear something off with my voice i've had allergies all day for some reason which is also why the video is coming out a little bit late today so forgive me for that i'm going to try my best today to get this information out to you guys be sure to like the video and leave a comment down below because it always helps me out so much i'm really struggling here today guys this is tough Let's go ahead and talk about the upcoming pattern. We're starting out with this European model, which as typical is the less exciting of the two. We have seen the European model be more exciting than the GFS sometimes, but it always tends to be the GFS model. Um, it's a little different today. I'll kind of break that down. Uh, but the European model is going to be very, very cold, but extremely unlucky with a lot of these threats, and I really mean that. So again, talking about that later on, let's talk about threat number one, which if you watched yesterday's video, you would know that we have essentially seen an evolution of this system where we have this upper low and this lower secondary low, and originally a few days ago, the models had these kind of combining uh, to where this one was moving northward, this one had its energy transferring offshore, and we would really see one true low offshore as the Arctic air was arriving, and that's when we were seeing the massive snowfall threats, and this is where we've gotten unlucky the first time, is we've really seen these models trend away from that combination and more towards a split uh, look, and those combinations are very classic, but staying split like this, I mean, we do see it, but... Uh, it's not any more or less common than that combination and transfer of energy offshore or anything. Uh, we do see some snowfall here for the Appalachian Mountain Range, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast, as well as Ohio here. So it's not a non-event, but it has definitely, like I said, gone from a major snowstorm to something a lot more moderate in nature here for the 14th, 15th. And we can see deep cold. I mean, if we're tracking this trough in the blue lines here, this is reaching into the Gulf offshore of the Florida Panhandle. So... This is deeply rooted Arctic air for Thursday here, the 15th. As we move towards Friday here on the 16th, uh, we see that Arctic air just kind of continuing. And this is mostly due to the fact that we have this very, very warm air mass out west. So it's allowing for this colder air to just kind of sit tight over the central and eastern states. Kind of as we've been predicting for a long time now, the, the pattern has basically gone according to plan at this point for our mid to late January time frame. It is literally just these storm tracks that have been the issue, and it is very reminiscent of last winter because last winter was extremely cold. It was the storms that were the problem. A lot of them were suppressed too far to the south, which is why the Gulf Coast and areas in the southeast coast saw tons and tons of snowfall, but the typical areas further north really struggled to get snow. Um, a little bit of hints of that today. Um, we'll see that kind of go down. But Saturday the 17th here, we are approaching threat number two. And I mean, guys, this is an awesome jet stream for snow systems. Uh, you've got just a little bit of lift up the east here. Uh, you've got this dipping into the jet stream where we can see little bits of moisture in here. So it looks primed for something to just ride along that jet stream and possibly bring snowfall uh, in these areas. But watch what plays out here uh, for this second system. Uh, we really get that Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina seeing snowfall. So it's like the snowstorm is there. The, the Arctic air is too intense. So there, it's, it's one of those things where there's such thing as too much of a good thing. So if you're hoping for snow, cold air is a good thing. Too much of it can actually lower your snowfall chances. And we've actually seen this, this Arctic air mass continue to look more and more intense to the point where our storm system in Arctic air are meeting up again along the Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina coastline for Sunday the 18th. It's just too, too much. As we keep going, we continue to look in this deep trough still by the 20th here as we get a little bit of a snow system, minor to moderate here for the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast as we're approaching the 20th. 
but it's not coming in the form of that massive east coast snowstorm. This is an inland low, much like our first one. And then we get a weak clipper for the Midwest, Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic uh, that moves through. We do get that southern energy moving into the system, but of course it comes right as we get this little glimpse of a southeast ridge. It's going to be brief, actually, here, so we'll see it move on in a minute. But we get Arctic air diving into the west momentarily in a southeast ridge, and then it's like instantly massive storms are showing up everywhere. We see tons of snowfall here. For the mountainous west, we see tons for the upper Midwest here, northern plains into northern Great Lakes and even into areas in Canada and Maine there. But a ton of rainfall for most of our eastern areas here for Saturday the 24th. Of course, it's very far out to take it with a grain of salt, but that trough from the west starts to move eastward and we do get a low moving along the jet stream. Wouldn't that be classic? When the jet stream is shaped like this, the same way it was shaped off the East Coast, it couldn't get any storms, but it goes over land and, you know, it can get more moisture, which does make sense. A lot of that Gulf energy is able to easily travel northward from this point, but when we see it offshore, uh, it's got a little less to work with over here at times, especially with that southern jet moving over Mexico and into the Gulf and into the southeast. A lot of times it can become less and less intense as time goes on. As we keep going... That trough arrives again for the east by the 27th, 28th here. This time, even more intense than it was before. Uh, this is severe Arctic air we're seeing here on this 12Z European model run. The GFS, like I said, is going to be a lot more exciting. The European model was miss after miss after miss after miss. Um, a point that I want to hammer home, I've seen some comments where they're like, you know, I don't know if this snowstorm's going to happen. It's We're going to have to be incredibly lucky for this to take place, for this all to add up. But I actually have a counterpoint to that. Um, if we end up getting no snowstorms in this 14-day period, no significant snowstorms, then it, it's not that we needed to be lucky for that to happen. It's that we got extremely unlucky or lucky, depending on if you want snow or not snow. I know it's confusing because it's like 50-50 for you guys. But essentially, the odds... Because of the Arctic air that we have, because of the amount of moisture we have moving on to that southern stream at times, it would take an incredible amount of unluckiness to not see something come together with those two ingredients sitting around just waiting for so long. I understand that if we have Arctic air and there's no real source of moisture, of course it's just going to be cold and dry, but we do have the source of moisture. We have severe Arctic air. It's just like it it refuses to happen. It's so wild, guys. Let's move through with the GFS model, though. Uh, this one is going to, say, be a lot more optimistic for snowfall. First off, this first one here coming up in just the next couple of days here for Wednesday night, we see a little bit of heavier snowfall between West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, and New England there. A little bit heavier already out of the gate. And then here, Saturday the 17th, Sunday the 18th, we can see something a little bit more significant wants to come together for the weekend for South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. It's funny, I was just telling you guys about how this GFS model tends to be too far to the southeast, which it does, but the European model is even further southeast than the GFS model. So then it kind of begs the question of how do we feel about where the GFS model has it placed. It does arise uh, some pretty interesting situations. Honestly, we've seen the, the European model kind of... Uh, I don't, I don't know how to put it. The GFS model has caught on to things a little earlier this year, and the European model at times has kind of jumped on board last minute. We'll have to see if that stays true in this instance for the weekend or not, but it's going to be interesting to track. Regardless, uh, we do see continued clipper systems one after another moving through. We do see a significant low that kind of wants to move in in a more horizontal fashion along the Mississippi River. We see wintry weather from Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, into New Jersey. This is a long stretching winter storm. Tons of ice here in the middle of it too uh, for a lot of like the lower Ohio Valley and the lower Midwest. Uh, really intense winter storm and that one does kind of wrap around. This is a good example of energy transfer. So you got your primary low here. Watch what happens. It kind of just like sends the energy offshore pretty instantly and then we actually get the low here. It doesn't it doesn't travel it actually just transfers all that energy 
Uh, I'll, I'll take that off screen. It's a little more confusing than not. But we see this one suddenly become the primary low here offshore. And then we do get that true mid-Atlantic and northeast snow system on this GFS model around the 25th. Which it does feel like we're kicking the can further and further and further down the road. But again, I mean, we're constantly seeing setups like this. Um, where you've got just this massive trough in the east, vertical jet stream. You've got the southern stream active along there. I just feel like it has to happen. I mean, it is so wild how long-term this cooldown is that we're dealing with. Um, we're going to have to see, but it is getting a little bit hairy, guys. I'm not going to lie. We're, the, the models are, are, again, kicking the, the can down the road. We talked about this earlier this month. I hate when I see that from the models, and that's usually a very, very bad sign, but not always. We do get another kind of interesting system here we get this northern piece of energy this is extremely far out so take this one with a grain of salt but we do see this one kind of move offshore and then want to move northward as like a miller b nor'easter uh, which is a nor'easter that moves about halfway off the coast the east coast and then moves northward from there and we can see this one kind of take place towards the end of the model run right there uh, which would be a pretty hefty snow system in and of itself but we actually end up with a ridge in the west trough in the east all the way at the end of the model run and we'll show you guys the temperatures in a minute, but here's the total precipitation. So just keep this in mind. I mean, it's relatively dry for the western and central states. Very, very clearly that we have a good amount of flow through the southeast, a good offshore flow of moisture, and a lot of this moisture is moving uh, over top of here as well. So keep that storm track in mind. There's obviously a very, very healthy stream of storm systems moving directly into this area. And then let's go ahead and take a look here at the temperatures real quickly and what you will see is obviously we're a little warmer right now we get this first little arctic blast here for the 15th 16th where we do see some inland snowfall as we approach the weekend we get an even stronger one here immediately after that we don't even take a break we're into another arctic blast we get a little bit of a southeast ridge there about around the 22nd 23rd but it's almost instant that we're into a much more major arctic pattern uh, and then we get another one after that. So if we were to look at the 10-day temperature average, this is the way that it looks. And if you know anything about these temperature anomaly maps, when you're seeing deep reds and dark greens and even those purplish blues in there for a couple spots, that's 10, 15, 20 degrees below normal over a 10-day period. That is severely cold. So again, keep this in mind and then keep the total precipitation in mind. Far above average precipitation, far below average temperatures. Uh, and this is what the European model gives you, which... To be fair, yes, we're missing some of the action here along the Mid-Atlantic and uh, Southern New England, but that's maybe around the only disappointment here on this entire map because we see the Northern Plains, Upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Interior Mid-Atlantic, and then Northern New England all seeing a lot of snowfall here from this European model. This is a severely snowy pattern for the North, uh, for the North Everywhere east of the Rockies in the north is extremely snowy here on this European model. The GFS model is a little bit more exciting. It kind of pushes that heart of the snowfall southward, uh, more so into this area where we're, we do see the mid-Atlantic flourish. We do see New England, even southern New England flourish. Uh, but it's the GFS, and again, we said it earlier, it tends to be a little bit too far to the south. East. So we will see what ends up happening. Uh, for right now, I do anticipate a very cold and very snowy pattern. It's just about where is that going to take place. Um, obviously, we've seen situations with the most upcoming one where, again, that low, instead of wanting to combine, it wants to stay split all of a sudden. So that one has gone from a massive snowfall threat down to like a more moderate, mi minor to moderate snow threat. The weekend one suppressed too far to the south. Afterwards is where there's a lot of question marks because we are relatively far out. We do expect cold air. We do expect an active southern stream. And I do anticipate to still see a lot of fluctuation from the models. We will probably see massive snowstorms continuing to pop up on these model runs for days now. It's just a question of kind of fine-tuning where that's going to land up. And of course, we're going to guide you through these model runs every single day. So be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.